Right, it's uh, Sunday afternoon, early October, still sorting out sort of uh, winter protection for some of the less hardy plants. Um, still haven't actually got any house plants in yet, other than the exception was the coconut palm which went in a couple of weeks ago because the, the nights are getting a little bit cool for that um yeah so we thought we'd uh, have a look at the summer house and see how it's filling up so i did speak a lot in a few other videos about putting stuff in the, the summer house so i've uh, bubble wrapped it so we'll have a look inside and just go through briefly what I've done and what plants we've got in there so far. All right, so obviously the door's open at the minute, but that has uh, been bubble wrapped around the glass area and the panelling. We've uh, bubble wrapped the inside face of the summer house to stop any drafts coming to windows. We've also bubble wrapped the uh, skylight. Just give a little bit uh, more uh, insulation property. And, uh, you know, I am going to be running a, a heater in here, which is going to be on all the time just for the fan to circulate the air. But it will kick in with some heat if it drops below four degrees. So it just uh, stops it from freezing inside here. It very rarely comes on to be fair like I say it's a bit of a greenhouse in here and um, you know it does heat up during the day and it doesn't really drop too low at night but um, you yeah, we've got the little heater underneath there just a small greenhouse fan heater so on the floor just to obviously heat rises so as it pushes the air out that will rise up and circulate um, so the dimensions of this summer house is four meters wide and three meters deep. So I've, I've sort of cordoned off the back meter and a bit with some old um, shower curtains, which are light, lightweight, and they're they're white. So the idea is that reflects. The light as well as so even with the, the bubble wrap on the windows which does sort of block a little bit of the light that will help to reflect a bit of the light and you know hit the plants from other directions rather than just the windows at the front um all right a quick explanation of what sort of plants i'm bringing in not to go through every single plant obviously it'll be all day but um sort of groups of plants if you like and why and where they're positioned so we'll start on the left here so at the very back not that you can see stuff that's going to need water the least i can still reach over there and water them but they're going to literally just uh, two or three times over the winter just a little dribble and we're looking at basically allocations there so we've got a uh, macariza um, Batora and Sumo so they're going to be kept pretty much bone dry over winter so they'll they should hold on to their leaves and they'll just sit dormant um, well yeah, so you can see the bigger leaves there right in front of that we've got a fishtail palm I've got two of these this one I, I didn't I didn't actually do a video on it I bought it in Morrison's earlier in the year um, it was reduced I think they were down I think it started off at 30 quid and they were reduced by half I had about eight in there and then uh, they reduced them down to li literally three pound fifty so I thought at that price we'll go with that and that's um, I don't know it's four four or five plants in that one yeah so at £3.50, I don't mind having a, a gamble and see how this does. 
over winter in these conditions. So I remind you again, just frost protected, that so heats up a little bit during the day, but you know, in general, very low light, very cool conditions for overwintering. I've got a bigger fishtail palm which comes indoors, but if it, you know, seems to pull through right in this situation, that's, that's going to save me space indoors. Right, so fishtail palm there, we've got a couple of uh, Nikau palms, or these are the New Zealand shuttlecock palms. Don't know if that's going to come up. So they they are quite hardy. I've had these for a few years. I've actually bought these um, online, just as little seedlings. They're literally about four or five inches, and that was probably four years ago. So they're, they're fairly slow grown, but they're nice, fairly hardy, easy to care for crown shafted palm so it's not very often you get sort of a, a cold hardy crown shafted palm so they look quite tropical and they're sort of nice upright shuttlecock formation and uh, they seem to be okay they're outside in a shaded area for summer then I say over winter in here um yeah I, I said I weren't going into details about plants so we'll be here all day um at the back here we've got the Kentia palms, some of the small ones. I've got a really big one indoors which is about seven foot tall. But that's a nice house plant. But the, these ones are outside for summer and they they take the the cool and um darker winter days, no problem in here. So they'll be at the back again. We'll keep it they don't mind being a little bit damp over winter, the same with the Nico palms, but Still kept a little bit more on a dry side. Um, at the back, we've got this is a standard bird of paradise. We've got the the row of giant bird of paradise. So there's three plants going along the back here. Um, we've also got the golden bird of paradise here. They're no problem. You keep them pretty much dry. A little splash of water now and then. They tick over no problem. Certainly don't look no worse for wear for sort of cool dry storm if you like. Um, we've got a lady palm, Raphus excelsior. So again, a little bit more on the dry side, but you know they don't mind a little bit of damp. They they take the cold. They're a good house plant. They like low light anyway, but um, that 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 goes through winter no problem in here. Um, we have got the Camadoria Metallica. This is the first time I'm going to try it over winter in here, so we'll see if that one does. That's a, going to be a new one for me. Um, in the centre here, I've got my, my sables. So we've got a couple of riversides, which are starting to go palmate. We've got a couple of sable palmetto and... Uh, Sable Miner there, so still quite small, but they do okay. I mean, I could, if I had space, I'd bring them in and keep them growing over winter, but I don't think I'm going to have space for them. So anything that it will take the, the cooler, long, dark winter will be out here. So I'm not going to get maximum growth out of them, but they shouldn't uh, sustain any damage. They'll just uh, sit there still over winter. So again, like I say, we've got the giant bird of paradise at the back. These are obviously at floor level in pots. We've got a little table in the middle here. Let's say I'll be having some smaller palms on there with the, the sables. Um, we've got the dwarf sugar palm. That that seems to tolerate being in in these conditions over winter, so that saves me a bit of space in the house. And I've got another big table here which we've got a combination of some bananas at the back. So I have got my uh, onset Morelii, smaller one, which is not quite big enough to dry store. I've got the onset Heneba, which I did dig out and pot up. And we've got another onset, sort of plain green one. So with all these onsets, I dug them up with a reasonable amount of root. I did take off any 
sort of old tattered leaves and I do know that some of these leaves will will obviously wilt down over winter probably just leaving the, the, the center one or two but the objective is not to keep them growing they're just going to sit dormant and be ready to jump into action next year so I'd had a comment on a video last year saying why is your inset in such a small pot it's not to grow in that well the objective is not to get it to grow it's just to again tick, ticking over over winter and burst into life as soon as the temperatures warm up we can up pot or get them straight in the ground as soon as warm enough um so we've got the uh Sicanensis um Bengal tigers i've got a couple of them in pots and like i say i would have risked them in the ground but um they weren't in the right position so i had to dig them up anyway so i thought well, why risk leave them out let's get them in here so we'll see again expecting some of the the leaves maybe all the leaves to wilt apart from the center and we'll cut them off as they do just keep it tidy in here um yeah and uh, they'll be ready to go out hopefully again next spring and then that leads us to some more sort of cold hardy when i say cold hardy palms i mean sort of semi cold hardy they're not really hardy for the uk but they, they, they do take a bit of cool so what we've got here is uh um we've got some uh some of the phoenix species and some of the living stoners so we've got a living stoner chinensis this is a small one i actually dug out of my center bed only yesterday because even though it is i survived the last four winters in the ground i do tend to lose the leaves over winter and then regrow so every year you're sort of starting from maybe one leaf if you're lucky and then like this one is kicked out two leaves and working on the third so by the end of the summer it's in this state and then in the spring again you're starting from scratch with just one leaf so for how much a hassle it was to dig out i just dug that out and potted it up and we'll have that as a pot specimen there do do really well actually in these sort of conditions over winter just sort of kept on a dry side cool sort of lower light as long as they're not getting that frost they they, they hold on to their leaves no problem all right so that's the chinensis we've got a Livingstone Australis, which has got a slightly red tinge to the leaves. And then we've got another Livingstone here. Let me just double check the name. That's Decora. So this is one, these two I got um, last year's as seedlings and uh, I think the Australis I kept in the, in in here last winter, and we can see us yes, uh, a nice shape, you know, sturdy, chunky little plant. Whereas the decor I brought inside to overwinter and grow, and it did grow, but obviously we got the stretched a lot more stretch on that, so it's not quite looking so natural. So I thought, well, that is fairly cool, tolerant palm like a lot of the living stoners are so that'll overwinter in here as well um so when it comes to the phoenix we've got a sylvestris in here little phoenix sylvestris we've got a phoenix reclinata we've got phoenix robolini it's a double in a pot there we kept these over winter in here last year and that no problem. Um a Phoenix Rupicola. So again all these don't mind going cool and sitting pretty much dormant over winter. So yeah, a lot of the, the Phoenix species seem to do well with that. Um yeah, so that's just a look at some of the, the palms we're doing. I've also got some of the small bananas here and little golden lotus banana and whatnot so we have got some space underneath the table which we got drip trays for which are going to be that's going to be used for some of the collocations so 
I'll be bringing them in, drawing them out in here, let them die back naturally in pots. And um, yeah, as it starts to warm up, I'll start watering them. Hopefully they'll come back again. That's the plan on that. So they're down here because they're not going to need light. So they're underneath the table there. It'll be a good place to store them. Yeah, so I think that the layout is important because you need to do need to be able to get in here and water occasionally. So as long as you can reach the plants as and when. I mean, I, I'll probably check in here once a week and just see how things are doing over the winter and anything that looks really dry or looks like it could do with water and I, I will give it a little splash. So the idea is that Let's say we've got three tables. I've still got some plants to go on here, some smaller plants to go as yet. And I've got some space on this one to go. But yeah, so we've got three tables. And in between the tables, I've got enough space to get through to the plants at the back and water. And even on the back shelf here, all the, the, the bar area, I've got space to get in there and water. And yeah, everything on the table is uh, easy enough to get to to water if need be. So layout is important. You've got to consider the size of plants and lay them down as such. So you get the biggest at the back, and then working your way down foliage wise to the smaller, so you can so you've got to fight your way through big foliage to get to the stuff at the back if you like. Um, yeah, so this is what I've done last year. It worked well, so I'm doing it again this year. So. I know everyone's not got a summer house, but if you've got a garage with a window or a shed, you could do a similar thing. Just have a, a table in front of the window and maybe just get some, uh, well, similar to what I've got here, an old uh, shower curtain, cheap shower curtain, and just uh, wrap around the table to reflect light and maybe get it a little bit warmer when the sun does come out. And uh, you'll be surprised what you can uh, overwinter in that sort of state. Um, yeah, so like I say, I've still got a few plants to bring in, but um, that's basically the plan for the summer house. Like I say, it didn't hardly really cost anything to, to heat that, except very rarely comes on the heating. But, so we have still got... Um, the big inset really eyes out and they are still pushing growth at the minute I mean it is like I say early October but yet yeah, it is about 17 degrees today we've had a couple of cooler nights I think it did go down to about six degrees one night but I think this week we're supposed to be getting reasonable daytime temperatures and nothing too low so a lot of the stuff is still out but it's just a matter of keeping an eye on the, the weather forecast, really, and bringing things in as and when they're needed. Right, we'll leave it at that. So that is how I overwint a lot of half-hardy stuff in my summer house. Obviously, if you, you've got a greenhouse, you could bubble wrap that and do a similar situation. Right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.